Hi everyone, I go by the name of Kevin Kryptonite and welcome back to the channel. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the subpar quality of the audio. I've been forced to like record under different circumstances that I normally do. Right now I'm recording through my headphones, so there's going to be a bit of static in the background and some background noise, but I hope that you can, you know, deal with me in the time being. In any case, as you can see on my screen, today I'm going to be playing a game called Dauntless. It is a free-to-play game that recently came out on console. I think it's been on PC for a bit. And it was accessible through um, Epic Games, the Epic Games uh, website. And now it's come to consoles and PC. And as you know, us console people, we like free-to-play games. So that's why I'm here. So, uh, without any further to do, let's get right into it. So, this is the world of Dauntless. And um, as you can already see by the graphic fidelity, uh, it has sort of a Fortnite feel. Now, the only reason I'm saying that is it makes sense because it was um, rendered using the Unreal Engine. And uh, although not all games that are rendered under the Unreal Engine have the same sort of graphics, this does have that Fortnite feel to it. I think the reason why they went with this uh, graphic aesthetic is so that it can be playable through multiple consoles without them having to up res or down res too much. And all in all, I think I love the aesthetic of how it looks. It's not too, it's not too cartoony, I guess, in that, uh, while well, you'll see as you play that it's not too cartoony. As you can see on the top left, where next to my name, um, I've already started to play a bit of the game. I'm at level 10 now. And um, I kind of do like the feel of the game. It's sort of a mashup between, as I'm gonna say again, Fortnite and Monster Hunter. So if you've ever played any of the Monster Hunter series, but looking at that type of game where you are hunting down monsters, um, breaking off pieces or parts to use as trophies, and then using that to craft different weapons and armor sets, which are gonna help you fight high level monsters as you move on and um, yeah that's pretty much what the gameplay is going to be like uh, it is a action role player game it's developed by Phoenix Labs I think it's one of the first games and it's pretty it's it's pretty fun there's a loop obviously that is not you know too in depth past what you'd expect from like a monster hunter type of game there's like a hunter board that you would get missions from and then from there on you would just um, go and quest for these different monsters. You can play into a party of, of up to four or you can go in solo. But yeah, let me just show you um, the uh, what I say. This is like a kind of Fortnite type of game. This is the aspect of it. Uh, let's just open up here. And um, as you can see, there's different like levels. That you would fight in Fortnite. Um, I think it goes up to level 99 if I'm not mistaken. But yes, um, there's two different tiers. A basic tier and then an elite tier. And as you level up, you get different perks according to the level that you have. At the top of what my level is, base number 3 or tier 3 rather, um, you will see another indicator. Those are called um, hearth, hearthstones and then the more of those you accumulate, that's how you go up in tiers. So you get different perks like uh, different banners, different outfits, so on and so forth. Like if you've played Fortnite, you've seen this format for sure. This is um, the Elite Pass or the Hunter's Pass that's on sale right now. You can, um, you can purchase those and then it gives you better loot, I mean aesthetic loot, compared to anybody that's just done the free to play, you know, basic pass. But yes, that's the Fortnite aspect of the game. And now I want to show you um, how this relates to Monster Hunter. So this is basically your bounty board. And here you have where you would um, hunt down different behemoths, as they call them. Um, in patrol, you have uh, daily rewards for different patrols that you go on. These behemoths, they do come in um, neutral, blaze, frost, shock, and terror. All of these are elemental types that you can find some of the monsters in and as i said as you fight these monsters there are different parts that you break off from them and they're going to help you to fight other monsters from you know uh, 
with different elemental types for instance if you are going to fight a blaze monster you would obviously need a frost weapon but you would first need to fight a frost um, behemoth break off parts from that and then craft the frost weapon which is going to make it easier for you to fight the blaze um, behemoth the neutral patrol um, or the neutral behemoths just mean that they don't have any elemental type to them so you can go in with the base weapon that you have defeat them and craft armor that way and then just basically build your way up as you can see on the top right there's a threat level to each of these and that is basically the type of um, higher level monsters to be looking at and what type of armor set you would need to get into so that you can uh, face these behemoths but yeah so patrol are the things that are like special um, event monsters that you fight that uh, NPCs send you on missions to go and accomplish they come with rewards off the bat just for defeating the monster um, also as you can see on the, um, to the right there's different things like uh, frost orbs or heart lily rams those are basically items that you can or plants that you can find when you're inside the hunting world that you can collect for you to be able to craft different items in the hub world which is what we were in just now before i opened the screen but yeah it's not too difficult once you get basically the fact that different monsters are weak to different weapon types and that you would need different armor types of certain properties to be resistant to let's say shock or terror or frost or blaze neutral as i said is just neutral you don't really need a specific armor type or specific weapon type for you to be able to hunt those monsters but they still do have a difficulty of up to as far as i've seen now seven but pretty much you can basically hunt by yourself or hunt in a group but if you're going to hunt by yourself make sure that you start off obviously with the weaker level monsters and then make your way up to the higher level when you're in a group it makes it more easier because you can have people with different weapon types and it's easier for you to take down or break off pieces as you see fit right so uh, moving on um, this NPC is basically talking about those plants that you get in the uh, in the monster hunting realm as you can see like dash leaf or worth wood those are like plants that you're gonna you can gather in this world and in that world only and you can use those to craft different um, buffs that you're going to be using while you're hunting a monster that's going to help you give you an advantage sort of you know just so that you don't die matter of fact let me, let me just craft a few stamina potions because stamina is another thing that you have to look at constantly to make sure that you never find yourself out of stamina because you can really get hurt if you know your coverage depends down that way in any case um yeah, this is the hub world basically as you can see there's definitely there's different npcs around you can't interact with them but everybody just spawns into an instant into this hub world you cannot fight enemies here you can't really interact with other npcs other than the fact that you can see them but this is also where you would have your party members spawn into the same instant with you before you go on a hunt so next uh, i'd like to discuss um the ui so i'm just gonna press options now this is basically the ui from left to right we have map quest log hunt pass mastery loadout personality and your movesets uh your map is basically where you would find it's the same as your the, the quest board where you get your different missions from it's just a quicker way to access it if you don't want to have to go to the board itself in game so yeah this is just another way you can launch missions right off of the map section inside your options quest log is obviously where you'll find the different missions that npcs have given to you for you to accomplish just like um just like in fortnite uh, at the bottom where it says challenges um are exactly what it is it's different challenges that you can complete daily for you to gain um i think that's i forget what it's called heart something heart, heart seekers there it is you gain the heart seekers and that's going to help you go up into different tiers where you will uh, be able to basically tier up until tier 90 that is not the same as your level in game by the way hand pass is obviously where like i said the different tiers that you're going to find for different aesthetic perks these do not help you in game now mastery is a bit more complex and if you want to i can get into another video of how the breakdown of this is because this ties closely to your weapons 
but basically you do have different weapons types so there's axes they are um, twin blades I like to call them they are um, heavy axes or chain blades I'm sorry the hammers the repeaters war pikes and obviously sword as you can see I'll put more into my war pike because that's the type of build that I chose but you can really um, according to your playstyle you can choose whatever weapon you want and the more that you level up into a specific affinity you get different perks for it uh, these are all the different monsters and the elemental types that you'll be fighting but I don't want to spoil too many of them so uh, let's just get out of there now here's my loadout and as you can see I'm using right now a ice elemental um, staff or uh, pickaxe and uh, you can customize all of this you can customize your 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 wardrobe so that it doesn't have to exactly match the armor type that you're wearing um but also like i said since you are breaking off pieces from different elemental animals you can also or behemoths rather you can also craft them according to the elemental type so if you break off a piece from a fire elemental type you get a fire spear you break it off from an ice elemental you get an ice spear so on and so forth and the more of those type of um, behemoths that you harvest, that is the more that you can upgrade out that specific spear or weapon of that type. Um, I do like this game because it doesn't get too heavy into the RPG essence of that you are comparing micro stats. It's big numbers that you can basically understand just by looking at them is that 220 is always going to be better than 100, so on and so forth. But yes, when you do start the game, you do start with a base level weapon for each type so you start with a base sword axe twin chain blades spear repeaters and hammer and then from there on you can choose whatever play style you want to use and uh, level up in that way your armor sets um you you will have to fight behemoths to get specific armor sets for specific types so right now i'm rocking a fire armor set because i was fighting a fire type animal um, behemoth I keep saying and I don't understand why in any case but I, I'm rocking a ice spear so you would see how that works right you would need the fire armor to be resistance against flames but you would need this ice spear to counteract um, its flame properties and basically that's how the game is going to end up working so you are going to need an armor set of each elemental type so that you have an advantage in battle otherwise you could really get messed up especially if you're going into these hunts by yourself it is important that you uh you craft you put in enough stats into the weapon and to the weapons and armor sets that you're going to need for whatever monster you're going to hunt now on to personality um this is basically for for yourself it's not going to affect your in-game too much it's just um for you to like you know customize your own player so title obviously it's titles you get this for different accomplishments that you get in the game you can customize a banner for yourself so that you know you're identifiable you look cool like that basically this is just the fortnite side of this game i would say uh, it's pretty intricate there's different stuffs that you can use there's different colors different animations it's all pretty cool um, it's just another way for 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 the game to add a little bit of personality to it and yeah uh, emotes of course are a big thing in these type of games uh, I tried to have some of the emotes play because in this menu you can but uh, I don't know it was giving me trouble um, I couldn't even show a simple one but as you can see at the top there you can have up to four emotes in your emote ring and then the fifth one is a flare the flare is important in the sense that it's how you communicate with your teammates if you don't have a microphone you use the flare to signify to um, a squad that you've located the monster uh, once you're inside the hunt because when you both when you all um, load into the game um, you don't start with the behemoth right in front of you. You have to actually go and seek it out And then so when somebody does find it You would shoot up a flare and it would signify to your other teammates where the location of your behemoth is 
So yeah, I guess the ping system is back in that sort of way, but that's the only way you can communicate with your teammates without having a microphone. And I think it's good that games are starting to implement in, uh, this mechanic into, you know, more and more of the game. But yeah, and now here's the move set. The move set is different for each weapon that you would pick. Um, since I'm using the uh, war, war pike or spear. Um, this is the moveset that you would have. Basically, there's only two attack inputs that you have, which is square and triangle. But you can see there's different combos and different ways that you can switch it up um, without it being too linear. So there is some variant in the way that you attack. Your R1 is different for all type of weapon types. Um, a sword will not have the same ability of an R1 as a, a pike would, or uh, as a, a hammer would, so on and so forth. Um, but I want to pay attention to the legend at the bottom. You have staggered damage, wound damage, part damage, and basic damage. And then different weapon types affect uh, behemoths in different ways. A spear is going to do more wound and part damage than it will stagger. Because for a stagger, you would need a heavy weapon like a hammer or an axe. Um, basic damage is just across the board basic damage. And I think any every weapon has basic damage. Um, oh, by the way, there's also guns in this game. So stagger damage, wound damage, part damage. Part damage is very important because that is how you break off pieces from behemoths. And those are the pieces that you need for you to be able to craft different weapons and different armor sets. So um, depending, depending on your playstyle, you're going to want to pick a weapon that you feel uh, serves you better. Especially if you're not going to be in a, a team most of the time. You might want to pick a weapon that has... Um, a good balance between part damage and maybe wound or stagger damage depending on how you want to take down these behemoths but like i said hammers are going to do more stagger damage than wound damage because they're blunt objects um swords are going to do more wound damage pikes are going to do more wound damage so on and so forth so yeah i think i've talked enough about uh the basic uh, mechanics of the game i think now all i should do is just get into a uh a hunt so you can witness what the game plays like for yourselves. Uh, I think for this section, I'm just gonna uh, let the gameplay um, happen. Uh, matches can take about as long as 17 minutes, depending on how difficult the uh, creature is, the behemoth is, up to maybe nine minutes if it's an easy uh, behemoth to fight. But yeah. Um, let me, uh, I'm just going to let this gameplay rock and then I'll come back afterwards and give you my final thoughts on what I think about Dauntless. So enjoy.
all right and we're back so final thoughts on the game um dauntless is a very straightforward type of game once you've gotten into the habit of understanding um armor sets weapon sets and elemental types for the behemoths that you're fighting it gives you some customization in terms of how you want to get into battle and uh it is skill based in the sense of you start to understand timing of different behemoths as you start to fight more of them so it is rewarding in the sense that no two hunts are ever going to necessarily be the same because you're going to have to switch up your play style uh, because of the animations of the different behemoths i would say all in all it's a very fun game to play even though it is a very it's a very loop based type of game once you get into it it's fun especially when you have a group of people that you can play with there's a lot of um, fun to be had so thank you guys for watching this video please like share and subscribe remember to hit the bell once you have subscribed thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys